I'm going to start recording them. Okay. All right, next one. Now, again, you guys don't have this in your uh, atlas, okay? But identify the structure indicated by the arrow inside the circle, okay? So obviously, this is what you the, the doctor sees, okay? When they're looking through the ophthalmoscope, okay, in your eye. And I probably gave it away when I said eye, but all right, <laughs> identify the structure indicated by the arrow inside the circle. So it's talking about this whole thing, okay? And Anna, you had mentioned this before. <laughs> so that doesn't help you, <laughs> okay? All right, what do, you, what do you say, what do you say, what do you say? What do you think? I heard, yep, that's the macula lutea, all right? The macula lutea is that uh, structure right inside the circle. Now if I wanted the thing, the dot at the middle, then the arrow would be pointing at that dot in the center. All right? <clears throat> yep. Okay, great question. Optic disc is going to be over here. Right, you can see all these blood vessels converging on it. I, I don't have an arrow pointer, so I got to use this kind of lame commercial thing. All right, so that's where all the blood vessels are kind of uh, um, converging onto. Okay, and also you can't see it here, but all the axons would be converging on there. There's no photoreceptors here, okay? So this is kind of like the entrance and exit to the eyeball, okay? And this over here contains, all right, the fulvio centralis, all right, that's going to be over here inside the macula luta. All right, next question. Oh, wait, I didn't even see what you guys had at home. Uh, yep, macula luta. Good job, good job. Okay, so number five, identify the structure indicated by the arrow. Okay, obviously we know where we're at. Okay, back into the good old spinal cord. All right, it's pointing up there, that structure. All right, folks here, what do you think? What are we thinking? Anterior gray horn or ventral gray horn? Yep, I'll take either one. And you folks at home, booyah. Anterior gray horn, good job. Awesome, awesome, I love it, love it. All right, next one, here we go, back to the brain. Read the question, pay attention closely to the question. Identify the lobe of the cerebrum indicated by the arrow. So there's five, there's five lobes, right? Okay, so you've got a 20% chance of getting this right. All right, and hopefully you spell it correctly. All right, what do you say? That's the frontal, yeah, yeah, frontal lobe, frontal lobe. That was easy, I could hear the, the beeping on the, on the recording there. Everyone was like, yep, we know this one. All right, good, okay. Now, unfortunately, you don't have this in your all right, uh, in your atlas, but by looking at this, you can probably figure out what that is. Identify the structure indicated by the arrow, okay? Pretty easy, right? You see what it's attached to, what's attached to it above and below, okay? So what say you folks? Lens, very good, that's the lens. And I'm sure everyone at home said the same thing. Yes, you did, nice, okay, the lens. Not too bad so far, right? If I feel pretty good, let's now let's try um, one of our sagittal or not sagittal, but our longitudinal cuts here. All right, of of the uh, back here. Identify the structure indicated by the arrows. Pay close attention to where those arrows are pointing. Okay. <clears throat> so I, I always recommend that folks use both models at first, just kind of give you an idea of what you're looking at in general, and then you can see the zoomed in version here. Okay. So what are we looking at here? What are we? Yeah, the sympathetic chain. Okay, it's pointing to this one's pointing to a ganglion. All right, and this is pointing to where the axons are. All right, but yeah, that's the sympathetic chain. Okay, so that's where we're going to see um, our uh, preganglionic. Well, we'll see some postganglion too. Forget that. I'm trying to get all philosophical. What do you got? Sympathetic? Yes, yes. Sympathetic chain. Sympathetic ganglion. Would you take off if we wrote ganglia? No, because here's the thing. Um, one of the arrows is pointing to the ganglia. So I can't be, you know, I couldn't take off of that because it is pointing to a ganglia. And you and technically would be right. Okay. But that is the sympathetic chain. You got it. All right. Here we go. Oh, this is a good one. It's a good one. You guys should know this. Read the question. Identify the lobe of the cerebrum indicated by the arrow. All right. I don't know. <laughs> I know. 
All right, this is the hidden lobe, all right? What is it? Insula, yeah, yeah, all right. Do you remember what sensation goes there? Yeah, taste, yep, taste, gustatory. What about olfaction, where does that go? Temporal, very good, very good, yep, good, okay. All right, what do we got here at home, everybody? Insula, 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 yes, I love it. Okay, here we go. This one you do have in your book, okay? Identify the structure indicated by the arrow. Now, that's supposed to be pointing to the, like, background. You know what I mean? It's not pointing to one of these lines here, okay? It's just pointing to that peach, orange background. All right? I feel like you folks at home knew that right away. What do you guys say here? Retina. Yeah, the retina. Okay, specifically what we're seeing is the ganglion cell layer. Okay, remember this ganglion cell layer? That's the cell layer that is going to be seen as light passes through, and then behind that is going to be the bipolar cell layer, and then behind that is the photo uh, receptor cell layer, and then we have the pigmented layer. What, what do we got? Retinal, yeah, you don't have to put retinal layer, but ret retina is fine. Retina is fine. Okay, back to the spinal cord. Identify the structure indicated by the arrow. Okay, pointing to that yellow structure there. All right, I think everybody at home's figured it out. What do you guys say here? Yep, yep. Epi yeah, that's good. That's yeah, epidural fat and the epidural space. I most likely I would just take epidural fat, you know. It's no, that's good though. That's good. <laughs> yep, yep. Epidural fat, and epidural space. Yep. You know? Good job, you guys. I like it. I like it. All right, all right. Here we go. Back to the brain. I definitely have a structure indicated by the arrow outlined by the black and yellow line. Okay, that that line is on top of the, this structure that it, in particular. Okay. Identify the structure indicated by the arrow outlined by the black yellow line. Now keep in mind the folds of the brain, we call those gyri, and the depressions in between the folds are called a fissure if they're deep and a sulcus if they're shallow. So, what are we looking here at? Yeah, you, either or, <laughs> in fact, they can be called the lateral sulcus or the lateral fissure. So both are correct. How about you folks at home? What do you got? Lateral sulcus. Hoorah. Yep, that is right. Lateral sulcus. Sorry, lateral fissure is, is acceptable too. Okay. You guys doing good so far? Want me to keep going? Do a couple more. Test your brains. Oh, back to the eye. Here we go. Identify the structure indicated by the arrows. Okay. It's part of the fibrous tunic. All right, if that helps, all right, the outermost uh, layer of the eye, okay? And there's only two parts to the fibrous tunic, okay? And this is where um, muscles, your extrinsic eye muscles, will attach onto this structure. Throwing in some lecture in there for you. Mm -hmm. All right, what are we thinking here? It's the white part of the eye? Sclera. Yeah, good job. Sclera. What do you folks got? Yep, yep, yep. Good job. Good job at home. I love it, love it, love it. Okay, back to the spinal cord. Key. So identify. Now look at the question. It says identify the space. I even tell you or ask you in the question. Identify the space indicated by the arrow. It's a very clinically significant space. If I want to find out if you have meningitis, okay, um, I would try to um, jab a needle in that space. Okay, so what are we looking at here? What is that space? Yeah, that's the subarachnoid space. What exists in that space? Cerebral spinal fluid. Booyah. What do we got at home? Subarachnoid, subarachnoid. Good, 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 good. Yep, subarachnoid. I would go through the other layers here, but there's a good possibility that I will have asked those further on in the test, so I will not go through those layers. Back to the brain. Identify the structure indicated by the arrow. Okay. By the way, that structure is in front of that line. Okay. It's not what the line is. 
Okay, it's the structure from that line. Very important, the primary motor cortex, functionally or physiologically, okay, but anatomically or structurally, we refer to that as the, yeah, the precentral gyrus. Mm -hmm. And I thought, I was like, that line's not moving. How can you say this is post-central? Right, right. That line's not moving. Right, right, right. <laughs> yeah, and that's, that's the thing. The, the lines there is just for, as a reference point. What do we got at home? What do we got? Uh, how do you know what it is referring to before? That's what the, well, the question asked. Oh, okay. No, right. you, you figured that out. Okay. Yeah, question, just read the question. That's why it's so important. Like I said, my tests, you know, I like my tests because they're very specific. And in the question, the wording, I try to make it, because I try to put myself in your shoes. So, I, you know, I want to make sure that I should be able to take my own test. But there's no, I don't like it when students ask me questions during the test, because then I feel like I didn't ask the question the right way. I want it to be as, under, as, e as easily to be understood as possible. Uh, oh, here we go. Identify the muscle. Look, I'm, I'm even telling you, okay? Identify the muscle indicated by the arrow. Now, this is a tough one because you got to kind of get yourself oriented to what the perspective here, okay? Am I at the top? Am I below it? Is it, you know, immediately? Is it laterally? Is it superior, inferior? All right. What I would suggest is this white structure right there. That's the optic nerve. So you kind of want to get your bearings and see where everything is in relation to the optic nerve. All right, and then you've got this gland here. You should know where that is. So I'm going to probably ask you that later on in the test. So what do we say this muscle is? Yep, inferior rectus. Good, good, good. What do we got at home? Inferior rectus. That's right. Good job, good job. Inferior rectus. All right, here we go. Identify the structure indicated by the arrow. Okay. So again, look at the big uh, model here, and then we'll zoom in so you can kind of see where you're at, okay? Identify the structure indicated by the arrow. What are you folks thinking? It is, but yes, that, that, is, that is the superior cervical ganglion, okay? Um, right. So this is what I would do. When you first look at this, all right, see if you can find the other two ganglia, all right? So if we go below, we can see one below, and then we can see another one down here, okay? So this is the uppermost or top one. That's the superior, okay, because it's above the other ones. Where is it in the, uh, uh, in the, in the body? It's in the cervical region. Okay, superior cervical ganglia. You guys at home, what do we got? Cervical ganglia, cervical, yep, yep, just be specific though, okay? You want to say uh, if it's the superior, middle, or inferior, okay? Well, good job, nonetheless. Back to the brain, identify the lobe of the cerebrum indicated by the arrow. This should be easy now. <clears throat> okay, identify the lobe. Of the cerebral one, it's one of the visible lobes. So now you have a one in 25% chance of getting it right. Okay, because you can see it. All right. So what are you folks thinking? What are we looking at here? Temporal, temporal lobe. Okay. Is everyone seeing that? You guys seeing that? Okay. All right. What do we got? Temporal lobe, temporal lobe. Very good, very good. All right. Back to the eye. Name the muscle indicated by the arrow. Okay, pointing to something red, it's up there on the top, okay? And you can see what it's kind of attached to, giving us an indication as to what its function is, which will help us figure out what part of its name is, okay? All right, so what are you folks thinking? What, what muscle is that? Yep, levator, this elevates palpebrae in the upper eyelid, superioris. Levator, palpebrae, superioris. This is the one that opens your eye. What do we got? Levator, palpebrae, superioris. Yep, very good, very good. So is this? It is. Um, 
muscle? Yes, it, yeah, it's for all of them. Yeah, M dot. And then if it's a blood vessel, which you, there aren't any blood vessels that you guys have to be able to identify, but it would be A dot or V dot, you know. That'll carry over into 211, by the way. So you don't have to write out artery, you don't have to write out vein, it would be A dot, V dot. But still, same rule applies here. Um, if you want to do M dot, do it. All right, what do we got? Okay, all right, next one. All right, identify the structure indicated by the arrow. All right, a couple things here just to help you out. It's definitely not a blood vessel, okay? It's not red or blue, okay? So we can rule that out, all right? So we're looking down here into the lower back pelvic region. What are we thinking here? That's the femoral, yeah. Femoral nerve, okay, and at home, what do we got? Femoral nerve, femoral nerve, good job, good job, y'all. Um, femoral nerve innervates your quadriceps, okay, big player in that. Also sartorius, that long muscle there. Oh, now we're on the back of the brain, identify the structure indicated by the arrow. Uh, identify the structure indicated by the arrow on the back side of the brain. What are we thinking? Yeah, right cerebellar hemisphere. Okay. What do we got at home? Right cerebellar hemisphere. Very good. Yep, yep, yep. Okay, good. Okay, let's jump back into the eye. Ooh. All right. Part of the apparatus that drains the tears from your eye. Okay. So this guy here, you can see where it's located. I'll give you a hint, the opening to this structure, it's called the puncta, P-U-N-P-U-N-C-T-A, puncta. It's hard for me to see the spelling in my head, okay? So what are we thinking? Yep, can canal, or there's another term called canuliculi, but yeah, canal's fine. What do we got? Superior lacrimal canal. Very good. Yep. Very good at home. Okay. Ooh, 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 ooh. I know the structure. <laughs> Give you a hint. All right. Sensory neuron cell bodies live there. Sensory neuron cell bodies live there. All right, what are you folks thinking? What do you say? Posterior roots or dorsal roots? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Posterior root ganglion or dorsal root ganglion. All right, remember, that's where the cell bodies reside. Ganglions in the peripheral nervous system. That's part of the peripheral nervous system. What do we got at home? Dorsal root ganglion, dorsal root ganglion. Yep, very good. You guys are rocking it. I'm not worried. I'm not worried. Okay, back in the brain, identify the structure indicated by the arrow. All right, in our mid-sagittal cut of the brain, we're on the inside here, okay? I will give you a hint. The structure is the relay station or filter, all right, for the cerebral cortex. If that helps at all. What do you think? What do you think? Thalamus. Yep. Perfect. What do we got at home? Yes, thalamus. Hooray. All right. Good, good, good. Here we go. Oh, my gosh. Easy. Look at that. We're looking at the eye, right? It's on the lateral portion in the upper corner there. All right. Every time I watch the movie Field of Dreams, has anyone ever seen that movie? Kevin Costner is playing catch with his dad. And he realizes that it's his dad. And this structure becomes very overactive in me. It starts to produce tears because it's such a touching scene. I think I tear up almost every time. I've seen that movie 20 times. What is it? Lacrimal gland. That's right. Lacrimal gland. Woo! Makes lysozyme and all that fun stuff. 
All right, we're back in the brain here, okay? Arrows pointing to this pink structure down here. Okay. It is part of one of the four regions of the brain. I'll be specific here in a moment as I give the folks at home a moment to get their thoughts together. All right. Four, it's part of the diencephalon. You can remember what makes up the diencephalon. Named already one of those structures on a previous slide. Okay. Well, these hints won't be there when you're taking the test, but still. All right. So what are you thinking? What are you thinking that is? Yep. Pineal, pineal or pineal gland. What does it make? Yeah. Melatonin. What do we got at home? Yep. Pineal gland. Something in the brain. That's right. Something in the brain. <laughs> That's the pineal gland. It's part of the, the diencephalon, but the epithalamus. Remember, there's two parts to the epithalamus. That's the habenular nuclei. You don't have to identify that in the test, and also the pineal gland. All right, here we go. Identify the structure indicated by the arrow. Look at what you're seeing there, okay? Look at the color. See where it's close to if you're not really sure. All right, what do you think? Yep, intercostal nerve. Is the intercostal nerve a dorsal ramus or an anterior ramus? A, excuse me, a posterior ramus or an anterior ramus of the spinal nerve? Remember how the spinal nerve has branches? Pardon? Well, well, you know how the spinal nerves... When they when they come out of the the, the vertebral foramen there, okay, the intervertebral foramen, they give off one branch that goes back to the deep muscles of your back and it covers the skin of your back. That's the anterior ramus. That's right. Yes. So intercostal nerves are anterior rami. Okay. What I was just describing was a posterior ramus, or you can call it a dorsal ramus or a ventral ramus. Okay. Either or, but this is an anterior. But intercostal nerve is the answer that we wanted. What did you guys have at home? Yes, intercostal nerve. Good. Hoorah. All right. Identify the structure indicated by the arrow. Look where the arrow is pointing. Okay. It's pointing there to the corner of the eye. <laughs> it's an answer, but it's not the right answer. <laughs> so what do you all think? That's right. That's where your upper and lower eyelids come together. Lateral canthus. Very good. Very good. Very good. Okay. Back here in the brain. Oh, yeah. All right. Identify the structure indicated by the arrow. That one. Yeah. Yeah, I know. That one's a tough one. Um, to help you out, it's part of the endocrine system, and it, cur it connects two crucial components of the endocrine system to one another. What do you think? The infundibulum. Infundibulum. Yeah, that one's a tough one. The infundibulum sits right below the optic chiasm. It connects the pituitary gland to, well, I'm going to probably ask you what the other structure is, so I don't want to give the answer away. Okay, what do we got at home? Yes, infundibulum. Good, 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 good. And they spelled it right at home. All right, identify the structure indicated by the arrow, okay, on the top portion of the eye. What do you all think? The superior palpebrae. Yep. Very good at home, superior palpebra. Good, good, good. All right, back on the inside. Oh, yes. That find the structure indicated by the arrow. This allows communication between the hemispheres of your brain. Okay? Specifically, it houses what we call commissural fibers. Why am I not surprised that you know that? He remember that. Yes, that's why if there's a damage. <laughs> Yes, that's true. Women have bigger 
a bigger one of these than men. What is it? What are we looking at? Yes, the corpus callosum. <laughs> I'll slow down. Oh, it's all right. If you don't, well, try to spell it right. <laughs> all right, identify this structure indicated by the arrow. Okay, you can see here, all right, where we are. All right, we're back in the spinal cord here. All right, and this is, I won't say it's similar to the corpus callosum, but as you know, cor corpus callosum allows fibers to cross from one side of the brain to the other. You know, they're commissural fibers. This too is what? The gray commissure. Yeah, gray commissure. This is where we're seeing, all right, crossing over. Correct, yes. The gray material is going to be unmyelinated axons, okay? Uh, it also includes, no, not just that, but it includes cell bodies. Anywhere there's no myelin, so cell bodies, there'll be some glial cells there, all right? And what am I missing? Oh, dendrites. Yeah. yeah. Good. Great commissioner. Okay. Okay, finally, we're getting into some other stuff other than the eye, okay? Just what we just covered. We just covered this. Identify the structure indicated by the arrow. Now, there's a couple possible answers for this for this one okay yeah I know but we're preparing you so if you're working in the hospital system or whatever I've gotten better at reading messing handwriting I think I'm pretty good at it so what do you folks think that is Semicircular canal, or you can also call because it's pointed to the yellow or the ivory color, so that can also be considered the bony labyrinth. All right, so if you want to put that in there, and I'd even uh, accept um, part of the vestibular complex if you really want to go there. What did you guys put? Bo bony labyrinth is good. Yeah, bony labyrinth, semicircular. Yep, yep, yep. Those are what I would accept. So good job at home. Okay, now look, read the question. Identify the brainstem part indicated by the arrow so i'm telling you all right where we are what region of the brain you're in i'm telling you you're in the brain stem there's only three parts of the brain stem right okay so what are we thinking midbrain i like it what about you folks at home midbrain hoorah good job good job okay um right here identify the structure indicated by the arrow that blue structure there all right, I'll help you along. All right, that blue structure likes to make cerebral spinal fluid. Okay, what are we saying? Choroid plexus. What do we got? What do we got? Yep, choroid plexus. Good job, good job. Okay, we're heading back in to what we covered in lecture tonight. Identify the structure indicated by the arrow. We talked a lot about this structure tonight. Okay, where those pressure waves slam against it, cause distortion. Right, so you should feel pretty good about what that is. Okay, what are we what are we looking at? Yes, man, I cannot wait. Good job. Oh, you guys made me so happy. All right, quickly let's look at this guy. Name the part of the brainstem again. All right, nor in the brainstem. There's three parts. Right? Figure out where you are, where the other parts are that aren't the correct answer in relation to the part that I'm asking you to label. Okay? Just to kind of rule things out if you're not quite sure right away what we're looking at here. Okay? What would you say this structure? Yep. That is the medulla oblongata. Yep. Every time. Every time it jumps into my head, I cannot not think of what. Yeah, yeah. Yep. <laughs> Foosball. All right. Identify this structure indicated by the arrow.
This structure falls under the classification of uh, what we call dural septa. That helps it all. Okay, if you remember what dural 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 septas do, right? All right, what would you say? Yeah, the falks, not cerebri, but the cerebelli. Yeah, that's the falks cerebelli because it's going to divide. <laughs> yeah, that's that's the part where you have to be careful. Yep, the falks cerebri is going to be um, what's going to divide um, the cerebral hemispheres. Easy to get confused, so that's what I'm saying. This is down there in the cerebral. Oh, goody, goody, goody. Look at that. Identify the structure indicated by the arrow. Right? This is important because our hair cell stereocilli, right, the kinocilum, are embedded into this structure. Okay? I don't really like this. This should look more like a gelatinous kind of. I don't like how they. It looks more like a tissue type of structure, though. What are we saying? Yep, tectorial membrane. Yeah, no, no. Okay, now we're going back to, all right, the brain here. Identify the structure indicated by the arrow. It's that blue structure, just in case you were wondering. Okay. This falls into, remember, the dural septa, right? Normally it's two layers. Okay, the dura mater is normally two layers, but in some areas it spreads apart. Those layers open up and it creates a space. Okay, and in that space, venous blood drains into. That helps. So that's what we're looking at here. You just got to kind of get the relationship of where we're looking at. And this space is yep, the superior sagittal sinus. Okay, superior sagittal sinus, all right? Runs along the sagittal plane here, okay, up top. Oh, this is an easy one. Everybody will know this one. Identify the structure inside the circle. All right, structure inside the circle that houses those sensory hair cells. Okay, what do we call it? Yeah, the spiral organ, spiral organ. And for you folks at home, yep, spiral organ. Good, good, good. You know what, maybe, I just can't remember. Oh, organ of Coti, Corti, C-O-R-T-I. Yeah, yeah, yep, yep, yep. Um, identify the structure indicated by the arrows. Okay, you can see it goes off to the side here on either side. All right, it's pointed with the, the blue, purple, whatever that is. Can't really tell, but that's what it's pointing to. What are you guys thinking? Yep, transverse signs. Yep, that one's a tough one. Transverse. Does that go all the way around? No, it does not. Are you saying down here or over here? That is no that that whole thing right there. That's the transverse. Okay. Yep. Oh, did it really? Oh wait, where am I going? Okay, next one. Oh, here's something. Identify this structure indicated by the arrows. Remember this creepy looking thing? All right. This thing represents those spaces inside your brain, in which cerebral spinal fluid likes to flow. Okay? It's just hard to figure out what this is because you've got to get your orientation. Is this anatomically correct or is this not anatomically correct? Is it facing us or is it? So, what are we thinking? You've got to be specific. Yes, the right lateral ventricle. Very good. Very good, very good. Yeah. Ooh, I like this one here. Identify the muscle indicated by the arrow. The only muscle that you have to know here in the ear. Okay. Yeah, well, you don't have to know the, the stapedius. 
but this one here is the one that helps to equalize pressure in your ear. Okay. Um, what are we looking at? Yes, the tensor tympani muscle. Yep, yep, that's right. Tensor tympani. Good, good, good. Yes, she did. All right, identify the structure indicated by the arrow. Okay. Your lateral ventricles will drain into this one. Okay. This structure then sits in the center of the diencephalon. Okay, it's a space at the center. What would you say? What do you think? Third ventricle, right on, right on, right on. All right, yep, third ventricle, you folks at home are right on. Oh, good, finally. The bones, the auditory ossicles. Which one are we looking at? All right, think about this one here, okay? To give you a hint, this is the one that attaches directly to the tympanic membrane, okay? And actually, when the doctor looks in your ear with the otoscope, they shine a light on the tympanic membrane, and they're actually seeing the position of this auditory ossicle. If it's on the left side, it should be at 7 o'clock, right, the shadow that you can see. And if it's on the right side, if you're looking in the right ear, it should be at 5 o'clock. You get into, into audiology, all right? <laughs> so what do we think? What are we thinking? That is the malice. That's right. Yes, good job. Okie dokie, back to the brain. Ooh, name, check it out. Make sure you read, name the space indicated by the arrow. I'm even nice enough to tell you space. So make sure that when you take this online, that if it asks you for the space, what you're looking for, this space is in front of the cerebellum. It's directly behind the pons. What are we looking at? Fourth ventricle. Yep, fourth ventricle. The, the third ventricle is here. All right, and then there's this tube here that drains down into the fourth ventricle, right here. Okay, I've seen that asked on the online exam. Okay, this model. Okay, all right, identify the structure indicated by the arrow. Oh, easy, couldn't be more easy, right? You guys are probably agreeing with me. What's it pointing to? Yeah, that's the spinal cord. That's right, spinal cord. Fourth ventricle spinal cord, you guys are rocking it. Good. Folks at home are rocking it. People here in the classroom are kicking it. Oh, this is an easy one. Identify the structure indicated by the arrow. Part of the external ear, its job is to help protect the, ex the, the ear canal here, and it helps to funnel sound into the ear. What do we call it? The pina, P-I-N-N-A. P -I -N -N -A. Um, I'd, I'd accept it, yeah. Yeah, you know. Yeah, you're not alone. You're not alone. Let's do a couple more and then we'll cut you all loose. Identify the structure indicated by the arrow. Hint, it is not a named nerve. Okay, it's none of the named nerves there. Okay, but look where it is. It's in the neck. It's a collection of nerves in the neck. What do we call a collection of nerves? Plexus. So what is it? Oh, yeah. Cervical plexus. That's what we're looking at. Good job at home. All right, back to the spinal cord. Take a close look at what that arrow is pointing at. Okay, if you're not quite sure, make sure you see what that structure is in relation to all the other anatomical parts and pieces around that. Okay. The translation is hard mother. What are we looking at? Dura mater. Yep. I know. But I figured you guys had already made up your mind on what it was. Okay. What are we looking at here? There's a structure that sits right on top of the anterior scalene muscle. C5, C6, C7. Wait, wait. Give me a sec. Oh, okay. That's the wrong one. C3, C4, C5 keeps your diaphragm alive. What is it? Phrenic nerve. Yep. I was thinking of a different nerve for that. Phrenic nerve. Hoorah. Okie dokie. 
take a close look, see what this structure is, all right, where it's pointing to. Talked about it numerous times, all right. What are we looking at? You can use anterior roots or ventral roots, okay? But what type of neuron travels in there? Motor, motor neurons, yep, <laughs> motor neurons, okay? No sensory, only motor. Good, 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 good. Not close, not the anterior ramus. Anterior ramus is after the spinal nerve. The sensory comes from the posterior. Say that one more time. Yes, the sensory, yep, sensory neurons travel in the posterior roots. All right, not one of my, this, I'm not too crazy about this model, but, all right, this one's a little bit tougher. Maybe it's not. I don't know. Kind of get your bearings here. You can see, all right, here is the spinal cord, and we're just zooming in on this area over here. When we zoom in, okay, what are we looking at? Posterior ramus or the dorsal ramus, okay? So Chuck, just to give you some perspective, here's the dorsal root of the posterior root ganglion, all right? Here's the spinal nerve right here, all right? So the first branch off the back of the spinal nerve is the posterior or dorsal uh, ramus, okay? That's going to come off towards the back. Again, this is not one of my favorite models, but it is what it is. Oh, wait. Let me see what you guys got at home. Posterior ramus. Good, good. <laughs> you made a comeback. All right. This is the tambourine of the year. Identify the structure indicated by the arrow. I was, when I was in medical school, after you finish your first year of anatomy, and you're not doing dissections anymore, you have a part. You know, it's where you bring all your scrubs and your lab coat, whatever you want in the dissection lab, and all of it reeks of formaldehyde, you know. And you have, we had a big party, big bonfire, and we burn it. They call it a coat burning party because you're supposed to wear lab coats. And I invited my brother, who's two years older than me, and uh, he teaches anatomy uh, at uh, Eastside High School. And uh, this is a long time ago, over 20 years ago. And so uh, this girl is like, oh, she st keeps sticking her hair here. Finger in her ear, and she goes, "Ah, oh, my tympanic membrane's hurting." Who says that? But my brother's like, "Is that your eardrum?" And he knew what the answer was, but he was just messing with her. He goes, "Why would you see your tympanic membrane?" All right, uh, eardrum, good, 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 good. All right, ooh, let's zoom in and see what we're looking at here. Okay, that pointy white structure there. Feeling pretty good about that. Okay, vertebral-wise, we would see that between L1, L2. Important to know, because if we're going to give you an epidural, you need to know that. What is that structure? Conus medullaris. Conus medullaris. Good job. Good, 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 good. All right. Ooh. Okay, you can see this pinkish structure right in through here. I, I struggled with it last night and I gave up. Well, there's two there's two terms that you can use. You know, the the the, the first one is the easier one. Um, well, there's actually a third, but we don't. That's not an actual. To, you, well, let me see. I think everybody's at home. Um, yeah, yeah. The, it's the eustachian tube or the pharyngeal tympanic uh, tube or auditory tube, but don't. That's not one of our acceptable answers. Don't say auditory tube. It's either going to be eustachian tube or the pharyngeal tympanic duct. I said tube, duct. Okay. I think the eustachian tube is the easier one. Oh, auditory tube is the easiest one, but that's not one of the allowable answers for us. Okay. This is the third of the bones. This one's very important because it hooks up against the oval window. It is. Yeah, that's right. It is the smallest bone in the body. It used to be called the stirrup, but now it is called the stapes. Yep, yep. Very good, very good. I know. Stapes are shorter, though. All right, almost done. Let's do, uh, 
Let's do two more. All right. There's that long tube-like structure that I was talking about before that connected the third and fourth ventricle. Okay. Once we say what the answer is. All right, what do we say? Cerebral aqueduct. Yep, the cerebral aqueduct. So you have to say that and say central. Cerebral. It's central on the quiz. Central on the quiz. Let's go with what's in your, um, that's a so misspelling. I, I did central, learned it on the quiz, and then I took the mouth of the cat, and I said that means that. Oh. Cerebral, cerebral. Yeah, yeah, I apologize. That shouldn't be like that in the. All right, last part. This one's easy. This is our snail shell. The organ for our hearing. What do we say? Cochlea. That is the cochlea. Very good. All right, everybody. I feel like your brains are full. You did well. I'm really, I have confidence, you know. I don't know why you guys were giving me the impression that, I mean, there's still time to study, though, I mean, to go over some of the material. But I was very proud, very happy with what I saw here tonight. So you make me, I know when I'll be at home grading all these tests over the break when you guys are drinking wine and eating turkey, um, I will be be 